Credit time! have your children said to you, you're a dork. <laughs> and I'll bet you were surprised. You probably didn't know you were a dork. You had no idea. What a dork you are not to have known. <laughs> but now there's hope. If you're sitting at home wondering if you're a dork, take this simple test. If you answer yes to any of these questions, then you are a dork. First, are you sitting at home right now asking yourself, am I a dork? <laughs> Do you smoke menthol cigarettes? Do you have two cats with corresponding cute names like Inky and Stinky or Boots and Buttons? Do you have a little plastic hand on the rear window of your car that waves? Do you laugh at the word Regina? Do you think pulling out is safe? Did you watch the big game last Saturday? Will you watch the big game this Saturday? Will you go anywhere to see a good car show? When people, when people feel bad, do you say, don't feel bad? Do you own a Cordoba? Are you John Turner? Do you think buying food in bulk is cheaper? Have you insured your bowling trophies? Do you live in the red house across the street from us that has those parties all night long? If you answered yes to any of these questions, you are a dork. Uh, there's nothing you can do about it. But now you know. Dork. <laughs> Got enough covers, dear. Oh, fine, dear. Good night, Tom. Uh, good night. Mm. Oh, sleepy. Mm. Feel warm, floating, like on water on a cruise ship. Moonlight. This song is dedicated to all the young lovers on this cruise. Excuse me, miss. May I have the pleasure of this dance? Why, yes. Oh, such a handsome stranger. I can feel his muscular body through my thin dress. My feet aren't touching the ground. We're in a state room. I want you here and now. Oh, my dress is slipping away. Yes, kiss me. <sighs> oh, my God. What is this, Wendy? My husband. What are you doing here in my dream, Tom? What am I doing here? What are you doing here? You're cheating on me. I'm not cheating, Tom. I'm just having an erotic dream. Who is he, my darling? Oh, I'm her husband, you homewrecker. Oh, Wendy, how could you? And with another man. He's not another man. He's a figment of my imagination. Why can't I be in your dream? I don't know. I don't script them. Oh, look what you've done, Tom. You've spoiled the ambience. Now we're in a World War II bomber. Come, my dear. We can parachute behind enemy lines and make mad, passionate law. Who is he? How should I know? He's not real, but he is gorgeous. He's not real? Well, well how do I know you're not doing this sort of thing in real life? What? Parachuting behind enemy lines? Oh, Tom, grow up. <laughs> Come with me across the desert, my lady. I know an oasis where we can be alone. Another one! You certainly get around. Oh, no, Tom. You're not going to spoil this for me. It's only a dream, and I'm not doing anything wrong, and you can't stop me. Well, that's where you're wrong, Wendy. I can stop you. How? Guilt. Guilt? What's that supposed to mean? You'll see. You'll see. You'll see. Hurry, my lady. Hurry. The storm approaches. Quick. Oh. Hide in here. Oh, all right. Oh, Oh, metal box. I'm in a metal box. It's shrinking. I'm trapped. Oh, oh, oh running. I must get away. I, I can't move. I'm falling. Oh, oh, God, where am I? Oh, oh, I'm in bed. Oh, what a dream. Oh, Becky. Yes, come ride on my motorcycle, you leather vixen. <laughs> Welcome, graduating class of 85. Welcome, can I have your attention?
attention, please. Thank you. Thank you. A university is more than just buildings and classrooms and the gym and the student center and the cafeteria and the residences. It's also students and teachers and janitors and secretaries. Got to keep them happy, too. But if we come to university to merely learn facts and figures, we'll miss out on much. Our universities don't teach that anymore. As you go out into the world, the real world, the cruel, harsh, real world, you'll look back on these days with great fondness. Hard to believe, isn't it? But that's how bad the real world is. And now I call on our senior valedictorian for the graduating class, Andrew Roberts. Thank you, Dean Don Merrily on High. <laughs> Sometimes as a student here, I wondered, why is there war? Why can't all peoples live in peace? Why can't we all just share this planet that God has given us? Why do other countries start trouble by becoming communists and forcing us to invade them? <laughs> and what about Russia? Why are they always wrong? Why do the Russians stir up trouble in Latin America? They have no moral right to meddle in the countries we control. <laughs> Why did the Russians boycott the Olympics? Their reasons for boycotting weren't nearly as good as ours. And those terrible weapons they have, no one should have weapons like that. No one. And they stole them all from us. We know that communism is stagnant and capitalism encourages innovation and growth. After all, we invented the A-bomb, the H-bomb, the neutron bomb, the lasers, and so on and so on. I'll bet you the Russians will be the first to use atomic weapons. First after Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And why don't third world nations give us their iron and copper and oil for our cars? They don't need it. They all ride around in bamboo carts. I don't know. You may say I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. I think we can make the world right and safe and just the way we want it. Some people think today that young people are too conservative. Well, that's not true. We want peace just as much as anyone, even President Reagan or Mr. Haig or any of those guys. But we know that unlike the 60s, carrying signs and waving flowers is not the answer. If you really care about peace, if you really care, you've got to be willing to use force to reach out and grab it by the throat. No, I say don't rule us young people out. Our day is coming. Thank you. Hello, I'm Mr. Interesting. <laughs> Here's something that I find very interesting indeed. An apple a day keeps the doctor away. However, two kumquats and a banana bring the dentist over. <laughs> Thank you. Squad, this is it. D-Day. Norman Day. This is the big one. We're going ashore in a minute. This is what we've been training for. All right. All right. You men are tough. You'll do as well here as you did in the practice session. All right. All right. Only this time we'll be fighting the Germans. Now let's go. Germans? You mean you mean we gotta fight people? Yeah. You said it'd be just like training. It is. We didn't fight anyone in training. Well, that's why it's called training. Oh, oh, great. Here, I thought we were going to run onto an empty beach and, you know, scream a bit, jump around, and then go back for a beer or two. Yeah. <laughs> and now you tell us we have to fight Germans? Next, you'll be telling us we have to kill them. Of course you have to kill them before they kill you. What? <laughs> They've got guns, too? Yeah. Oh, my God. Where's my lawyer? Oh, come on. You, man, you've seen war movies. You know people get killed. My mom said those were actors and no one is really killed. Yeah. Oh, I feel so used. <laughs> I'm taking my gun and going home. Me too. No, no, wait, you can't quit. Now this is a mute. That's it. I'm calling the general on the battleship. General, come in. This is Landing Craft 9. Yes, Landing Craft 9. Sir, my men are refusing to go ashore. What? All right, men, this is your general. I know it's going to be scary and dirty and dangerous, but you're here to protect the free world. 
protect the girl you left behind you. An apple pie, snack and cake, and cheese treats, and oven fresh dresses. Food everywhere is dependent on you. Now be brave. Stay calm and it'll go just like we planned it. Well, we might get killed. What? There is Germans out there with guns. Yeah. What, is this true, Sergeant? Well, yes, General. <laughs> Who's responsible for putting those Germans there? Well, uh, Adolf Hitler, sir. Well, that's it. He's fired. Come on, man. Let's go back to camp. Play pin the tail and the donkey. Yay! Next week on Great Conflicts of the 20th Century, the Battle of the Bulls Panty Raid. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Mr. Interesting again. I have a very interesting question. Before man had written languages, did he have to use the phone a lot more? <laughs> well, I only said it was interesting. I didn't say it was a real killer. <laughs> Will the girls ever be proud of me? Imagine me, Fred Flintstone, holding the burning log. Me, appointed keeper of the fire for the whole tribe. Uh, Gee, Fred, if you're keeper of the fire, you better watch where you're going, or else you'll trip and fall into the... <laughs> swamp! <laughs> hey, Fred? Fred? Hey, Fred, are you okay? Uh-oh, Freddy, oh boy. Look, the fire's gone out. Don't say another word, Barn. Not another word or I'll crush your skull with this rock. Sheesh, what a grooch. If Mr. Slate finds out, I'll lose my job and my intestines. Remember, Barn, we gotta keep this hush hush. My lips are sealed. Oh, here we are, cave sweet cave. Well, Ma, we're home. <laughs> no, 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 boy, no, boy, no. <laughs> Uh, gee, Fred, why'd you kill Dino? He can't jump up on people. He's got to learn that. Oh, there you are, Fred Flintstone. Did you drop off at the tar pit on your way home and kill something like you promised? Of course, Wilma, dear. Here you go. A fierce giant sloth. Just for you. It took me hours to put up a fight, but I did it. Man the hunter. Listen, man the hunter, this sloth died of starvation. Look, Fred, there's ants all over it. Oops. I forgot to wipe them up. <laughs> I ought to stone you to death. Now, Fred, you give me the fire and I'll cook the meal. Uh, I, I can't. Why not? Uh, because, um, because it looks like a storm is coming up and I, I don't want it to go out. That's not why, Fred. It's because you fell in the swamp and you... Come here. Oh, up, Barney. Well, Fred Flintstone, I know you're up to something, but I don't care. We'll just have roots and berries tonight. We never cook the meat properly anyways, and we're constantly suffering from worms and parasites. <laughs> Flintstone! <laughs> Mr. Slate. <laughs> Flintstone, we're attacking the river, people, and we need your fire to burn down their village. Uh, the fire, right. Uh, well, it's... Uh, uh, and let go of rubble, Flintstone, right now, or I'll take your wife from you. Mr. Slate. <laughs> yes, sir. Dodgy uh, Fred, why'd you put your hand over my mouth? I wouldn't tell on you. Thank goodness. Tell what? Tell you that Fred lost the fire. What? Fred Flintstone, you didn't lose the fire. I can explain everything. I, I can get it back, I swear. How? Oh. Well, um, I could, uh... uh -huh. Oh! Flintstone, oh. I knew we could depend on you. Yeah. 
Hello there. <laughs> I'm Mr. Interesting. Here's something which I find very interesting. How is man different from the animal? When a bee finds a field of flowers, he returns to the hive and does a dance for the other bees. But when a man finds a field of flowers, he builds a shopping mall. <laughs> then, he shops in the stores and gets his hair done in the barber shop and eats in the restaurant and goes to the discotheque and does a dance for the other bees. Oh, there were so many horrible things about the Depression. The dust storms, the bread lines, the evictions. But the worst of them all were those terrible old radio shows. Gather round the radio, space cadets. It's time for the future adventures of Todd Booster. Imagine it's no longer 1934. Join us as we class 50 years into the future. A future where pajamas are radio controlled. A future where people have automatic toothbrushes installed in their mouths. A future where anyone who loses 10 pounds can publish a diet book. The year 1984, our hero called Booster. You have to see me, Mr. President? Yes, I did ask to see you, Todd. Uh, turn around. I've seen you. You can go now. Was there anything else? By gum, there was. Oh, all right, I'll buy gum. Um, Wrigley Spearman. All right, thank you, Todd. I'm using the money to finance my re-election and pay for a trip to Utah. Is your campaign going well, Mr. President? No, Todd, I'm losing in every state but Utah to a man named Bunny Lips. Not my evil arch enemy, Moo Moo Bunny Lips. No, his identical twin brother, Bunk Trouser Bunny Lips. <laughs> He's running on a platform of war, hatred, and senseless destruction of the environment. Why, that's your platform, Mr. President. So he must be stopped. He's got a machine that will disintegrate anyone who doesn't vote for him. Don't worry. I'll find him and destroy his machine. No, bring it back to me. I need the vote. <laughs> this could be dangerous. I better go see Professor Gumbo. And I'll have the White House military band play some transitional music. A one, a two... Why, if it isn't little Todd Booster. Yes, Professor. Oh, I was wrong. It is Todd Booster. Do you want to go fishing with me, Todd? You can carry this. What is it, Professor? It's a beaker, Todd, filled with doers. Oh, no time for that, Professor. Bunk Trousers Bunny Lips has a voter disintegration machine. Ah, then perhaps this machine here will interest you. You see, the motor releases anti-gravity gas into this dynamo, which drops super strong hooks from high-tension metal cables. What's it for? Mainly for musky and some lake trout. <laughs> yes, but how will I defeat Bunk Trousers Bunny Lips? Well, I do have this. What is it, Professor? It's a beaker toss. <laughs> will you never learn? I guess not. <laughs> but it's full of bacteria that eat through metal. Those are dewworms. Oh, wrong beaker, sorry. <laughs> Here's the right one. Thanks. Now, let me put my rocket pack on and you can light the fuse. All right. <laughs> Look at that rocket pack go. Why didn't you wait till I put it on? Oh, sorry. Now I have to cab it to Bunk Trousers Hideout. Oh, taxi! Taxi! And I'll go fishing. Now, where's that beaker? That's the place right up there, driver. Just inside those lead shielded 40 foot thick concrete walls. Right, sir. I'll take you there. Hey, a beam from your headlights is melting the wall. It's my super advanced technological breakthrough disintegrator for destroying boosters and opening garage doors. You're no ordinary cab driver. That's right. Just let me rip off these false ears. Thank <laughs> you. 
Mr. David Milligan. Have a nice lunch, everybody. Bye-bye.